Okay, our final panel member then is Chris Peterson. Chris is a longtime acquaintance of mine and he's the producer of the Berkshire pork that my wife Ellen and I have been enjoying from our freezer for a while. We bought a half pig from Chris. And Chris is a traditional independent family farmer who raises non kfo pork for discriminating customers. He's also a consultant for the Social Responsible Agriculture Project and a board member of Organization for Competitive Markets, and he's a well-known national advocate for independent family farms. Next, uh, my good friend Chris Peterson is going to be speaking, and every time I go up to the Des Moines, up to the Capitol or somewhere where something is happening, Chris is there, and probably he's there a lot of times when I'm not there. Actually, Chris was given the name uh, by RFK Jr., um, Robert, 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 RFK, Robert, Robert Kennedy Jr., yeah. Um, the name Freedom Fighter, right, Chris? Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a long, long day. I come from about four hours north of here. Um, I get around a lot. I bleed rural. I bleed and stand with and feel the pain. And the good things about family farm agriculture, I've been doing this for 25 years alongside of farming myself. And this is me. Uh, this is my sow herd, part of it. Uh, these gals are all gonna have babies. Looks like they're a couple months away, but um, mm -hmm. that's, that's some of my little ones, they're a few days old, and I use a European model, it's too hard to explain it, but I throw the sounds separately, either in A-houses or in individual little buildings that have stalls in them where the sows can go in and out. I call them sow condos. <laughs> and the little pigs, when they get big, big enough, they can get out, but at about 10 days old, the wife and I start gathering them up and castrating the males and vaccinating. I don't do antibiotics for anything. I don't need to. Um, and then we group the sows together along with the little pigs, probably 10, 12, 15 litters per bunch with an area the little pigs can go back in and have a couple of heat lamps, draws them away from mama on a cooler night so they don't get laid on. There's also starter feed back in there so they get start eating. And at about four to five weeks, I don't wean early. I Common sense farming, okay? It's far cheaper to feed one mouse than eight or nine mouse. And so I don't wean the little pigs till they're four to five weeks old. I take the sows out, leave the pigs in the building with the same environment, the heat lamps and everything for a while. Heck of a lot less stress. So that's one of the reasons you don't need the antibiotics and all this other stuff. It's called raising hogs on the cheap. And I've always done it this way, and it's better for the animals, it's better for the farmer, it's better for the farmer's pocketbook because you're putting more money in it than leaving. And by that I mean, you know, the CAFO industry put up these expensive buildings. I, I associate these young farmers getting started um, putting up CAFOs and everything comparable to the urban people, the urban kids who have this massive college debt, they're forever stuck with. And when you raise livestock this way, you're going to make some money. And, you know, it's all about local and sustainable. And organics is fine, but I'm sold on local and sustainable. Know your farmer, know your food. And Oop, always point the wrong way. Uh, wow, yeah. we're going into hyperspace here. <laughs> this is, uh, 
part of a litter I had to bring in last fall because they got cold. And again, this is a family farm, not a corporate farm. Uh, brought them in the house, put a heat lamp over them, and they were barely moving when I brought them in. Within an hour and a half, they were hungry. They were looking for mama. So back outside we go. Well, this is what happens when you farrow in the spring especially, and it starts getting warmer days, warmer and warmer, and the natural heat lap. These little pigs come out and lay like this, it's sunbathing. They love the warm sun and the clean air and everything else, just like humans do, right? That's one of the end results. Uh, Berkshire bacon, best on the planet as far as I'm concerned. The Berkshire breed, uh, nationwide, um, domestic, they've won tasting awards and meat quality awards across the board, even by the national pork producers, believe it or not. They have to admit to a few things. Another end result, uh, pork chops on the grill, uh, best on the planet as far as I'm concerned. That, this is uh, our two grandkids and um, our daughter and that's her husband there, Curtis. They got an acreage and they're doing a lot of things with some cattle and uh, sustainable food, marketing, everything else. So she's, they're starting to get into this a little bit too, very proud of them. And of course, my pigs. I guess that's it. But to top it off, um, again, there's ways for family farmers to stay in business and do things within the social parameters. You don't stink up the neighborhood. You don't ruin people's water. Uh, animal welfare, everything included in that. And quite frankly, as a farmer, I'm not an animal rights guy, but I sure the heck am an animal welfare guy. I believe in taking care of these animals. Uh, I belong to a group, marketing group called Berkshire Good Gold. Um, we have a few hundred producers across the state of Iowa, and um, we had group marketing contracts, um, not individual contracts, um, and it seems to work very well. The prices are good, keeps me in business. I sell a lot of uh, pigs on Facebook now. Uh, <laughs> face Facebook marketing, unbelievable. <laughs> the growth in that. And it's an easy sell. I just put pictures of my pigs and explain the process of what I do. And I got pigs going to Missouri, Minnesota, Wisconsin, all over. And nobody complains. Nobody, I have never had complaints on my pigs. And Animal husbandry doesn't exist anymore in, in the pig world. Not one land grant in this country teaches animal husbandry anymore. It's animal science. That's what has happened to this industry. And quite frankly, what I'm doing today I was doing basically with a few changes, same thing 25, 30 years ago. Back then, it was called mainstream agriculture. You know what they call it now? Niche or alternative. That's what the industry and the politicians and federal farm policy have done to the family farm. Pretty sad. So, all I can say is support your local 
farmer regardless of what he's producing. And by the way, the industry talks about all of us pork producers. I don't raise pork. I'm not a pork producer, I'm a pig farmer. I raise pigs. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Now, the process now is that we're going to just discuss for a few minutes here, and then there'll be a five minute break, and then we'll take questions um, from the audience. And John, you'll have to be the timekeeper here. Okay, so I had a, a question for the panel, first of all. What has to happen for these alternative, regen I mean, you don't call them alternative, regenerative farming systems to be financially viable for a larger cross-section of farmers? Like I was mentioning up there, you guys, we all got to, as family farmers, we got to start working for ourselves again. Figure out a way to keep the bankers and the input specialists <laughs> and all them people out of your pocket. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these guys, they end up working for the CAFO owner, or I mean, yeah, the CAFO owners like Smithfield or whoever you'll end up working for the machinery companies, uh, the fertilizer companies, the chemical country companies, and at the end of the day, at the end of the year, you're hoping for a sliver to be able to live off of. And that, that's the problem I see in agriculture today. A number of years ago, I think it was 10, 12 years ago, um, Des Moines Register, uh, the ag guy over there, he's retired now, Jerry Perkins, Wonderful guy. Called me up one day and he says, hey, you interested in doing a story? I said, well, yeah, what are we gonna talk about? And he ran a story on me how this farmer was making more money raising 400 pigs a year than he was when he was a commercial grower in the 90s for the ASAN hogs hit, uh, raising 3,000 head of pigs a year. That's, that's the key, smarts. Know your business, know what to do. You know, I call it farming smart instead of letting everybody get in your pocket. <laughs>